and another one on this one again with tri equilateral triangles. So um, the region above bounded by y equals 2 root x and y equals x is the base of a solid S if the cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis this time are equilateral triangles, what is the volume of the solid? So as with all the previous examples, let's um, redraw this by pushing this axis down a little bit so we can see it better in 3 space. So there's that line, y equals x. Here is the curve, y equals 2 root x. And now, if I make a planar cut anywhere perpendicular to the y-axis, then, so I got a nice plane, goes off infinitely in every direction, I should get an equilateral triangle. And I do. That's what I was told I would get. And any one of these other cuts later on will give me another equilateral triangle. So we get a similar, eh, not similar in a mathematical concept, but a shape that's like the one we had in the last problem. Okay, um, again, aerodynamic -y. very, very, very technical term there. All right, so as before, we already saw last problem. We have an equilateral triangle, S, S, S. We know that this is going to be S root 3 over 2. So we know the area in terms of S will equal S squared root 3 three over four. If you didn't watch the last video, it's because we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle for this. Okay, but the big problem now is this. To find my side length, I need to find an x difference in with respect to y here. So this is going to be my side length s. I need to find the length here, which is an x length, and these are both functions in terms of x for y. So they're giving me the wrong thing. And we're going to, again, from the last problem, we're, we're still going from 0 to 4, but it's for a different reason that we go from 0 to 4. It's because that those are the y bounds. If I solved these, this equation, this nonlinear system, I get the point 0, 0 and the point 4, 4. So this interval is where my region is going to be located, this interval on y. Okay. So I need to look at this and let's say, okay, this x value out here, well, this is really easy. If y equals x, then x equals y. I need to solve both of these for x so I can find this s as an x length in terms of y. This one right here, if y equals 2 root x, let me write that up here, y equals 2 root x then root x is equal to y over 2, which means that, I'm not going to have room right there, which means that x, so I square both sides, x will equal y squared over 4. And I'm act, I'll... The domain here we have y is greater than or equal to 0. I don't actually have anything down here. It doesn't matter. But to be accurate here, this right here is only valid in this sense when y is greater than or equal to 0 because I don't have the curve down here. Okay. There we go. Functions of x so I can find this x length in terms of my various y's going from 0 all the way up to 4. So we can use that to say, okay, my side length for this will be the bigger x value, which is going to be y, since it's farther right, and minus my smaller y value, which is y squared over 4, since it is farther left, which means my area now, in terms of the y variable, will equal this squared, so y minus y squared over 4 squared times root 3 over 4. And I have room right here, may as well just do it right here. So if I square this, um, this term will give me the biggest, uh, biggest 
power, so I will square this first. I get y to the fourth over 16, a positive one. So y to the fourth divided by 16. Then I have two multiplied by these terms, so minus y cubed over two, and then this term squared plus y squared. Okay, so that's my area in terms of y. And as we've been doing already, the volume will be equal to the integral, in this case from 0 up to 4, because we are, going, we are figuring out y's change my side length. It's perpendicular to the y-axis, so 0 to 4 of the area in terms of y. Let me just put that in so we'll save a little bit of room, because, again, this will be really fun with all these fractions. So y... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't want to forget the root 3 over 4 here. Okay, so back to this. y to the 4th over 16 minus y cubed over 2 plus y squared over nothing, over 1, I guess, um, times root 3. 3 over 4 dy. And if you remember, this first piece right here is the area of one cross section. So it's going to be the base of our approximating triangular prisms. And this right here will be the height of any of those approximating triangular prisms. But let's bring this out to the front and take an antiderivative. So this will equal root 3 over 4 multiplied by, and the antiderivative, so y to the 5th divided by 5, so that becomes y to the 5th over 80. y to the 4th divided by 4, so minus y to the 4th over 8. And then y to the 3rd over 3, so plus y cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 4. And we've done this a little bit before, so equals, I still have the root 3 over 4, multiplied by, I put in the 4, I put in the 0, and I subtract the 2 of them. The 0, again, will cancel everything out, which is nice. doesn't always have to work that way, so it's worth keeping in mind by putting the 4. Okay, 4 to the 5th power. Well, that's the same as 2 to the 10th power, so that's 1,024. But I can actually divide out... I'll, I'll put it up there. We'll do another step so that everyone can follow along. 1,024 over 80 y to the 4th over 8, that's the same as 2 to the 8th, so I get minus uh, 256 over 8. y cubed over 3, well, 4 cubed is 64, so plus 64 thirds, minus, I put in the 0 and I get a big old 0. And that zero is gone. Okay, so let's reduce this down a little bit. First thing, I still have root 3 over 4. 1024 divided by 80. Well, they both have um, terms of 16 in them. So if I divide that out, let me make sure I'm getting this right, I'll get 64 fifths. 8 actually goes into 256, so let's see, that's going to bring me back down to um, 64, is that correct? Let's see, 8 times that, yep, okay. Uh, no, that's not right. Let me try that again. So if I divide that by 8, it actually gives me... 32. Okay, much better. All right, and then 64 thirds does not reduce. Yay, not reducing. Okay. Least common denominator, 
15 across the board here, so I'll get everything in terms of fifteenths. So root 3 over 4 times multiply top and bottom by 3. 64 times 3 gives me 192 fifteenths. I'm getting really good with these fifteenths because I seem to get them in every single problem. 32 times 15, 450 plus 30 gives me minus 480 over 15. This 64 thirds times 5 fifths, 64 times 5 gives me um, 320 over 15. Okay, let's do this. So we get 420, um, 512 minus 480 actually gives me 32 over 15. Hey, this might give me the same exact volume as the last problem. I want to look into that later, see if there's a pattern to that, but times 32 over 15, which, and again, what we all learned in um, kindergarten or wherever, that becomes 8, that becomes 1, and we get 8 root 3, over 15.